We have three major salivary glands in our body, the parotid gland, the submandibular gland, and the sublingual gland. Typically, we see patients who get infections in these glands and they respond to medicines. However, some people have chronic infections and chronic swelling in those glands. Some of those patients get little stones similar to kidney stones that can block the opening of the gland and cause it to swell. These are common in the parotid and in the submandibular gland. Typically when people have stones, if the stones are near the opening of the duct in the mouth, we can often remove the stones through the inside of the mouth, leaving the gland in place. However, in those patients where the stones are very large or lodge back into the gland, sometimes the glands have to be removed. Another reason why we see patients is some patients will get tumors in their salivary glands. The most common gland to have a tumor in it is the parotid gland, and what's nice about that is 80% of the tumors in the parotid gland are benign or not cancerous. However, we still recommend removing those tumors because they enlarge with time. And the other reason, if the tumors are left there a long time, over 10 years, a certain amount of them will turn cancerous. With that surgery, an incision is typically made around the ear, a flap is raised, typically the nerve that moves the face is dissected out, to preserve that and the tumor and part of the gland with the tumor is removed. Care is taken to preserve the function to the face and generally neural monitoring is used throughout the procedure to help avoid injury to that nerve. Tumors can also occur in the submandibular gland if cancer is found in a salivary gland, treatment with radiation or chemotherapy may be needed after surgery.